a former Confederate soldier, is unexpectedly transported to the planet Mars, known to its inhabitants as Barsoom. There, he discovers his newfound extraordinary strength and agility due to the planet's lower gravity. Carter becomes embroiled in the ongoing conflict between rival Martian groups. During his adventures, Carter meets and falls in love with Princess de Authoris of Helium. Together, they must navigate the perilous terrain of Barsoom while facing numerous adversaries in their quest to save the planet. On the distant planet of Barsoom, various clans are locked in a fierce battle for supremacy, with Zidanga, the predatory city, seeking dominance. The only resistance comes from Helium, who ambushed Zidanga's flagship during a sandstorm, causing heavy damage. Helium's silver-clad soldiers invade the ship and seem on the verge of victory when a mysterious surge of blue beams obliterates all the soldiers, sparing only Zidanga's leader, Sav. Three enigmatic beings known as Therns, who serve a goddess, offer Sav a weapon emitting these blue beams and promise him dominance over Barsoom. The movie then shifts to New York City in 1881, where John Carter sends a message to his nephew, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar arrives at John's mansion, where the butler and attorney deliver the somber news that John has passed away, leaving behind immense wealth and treasures from his adventures. John's body rests in a tomb that can only be opened from the inside, awaiting Carter's instructions. Later on, Acura gets permission to read John Carter's private journal from his lawyer. The journal tells the story of how John's journey began in 1868 at Fort Grant Outpost. He got into a bar fight and was arrested by Union Colonel Powell because he hadn't enlisted to fight the Apache. John used his cleverness to trick a guard and escape, with Union soldiers chasing him. Things got chaotic when the Apache tribe suddenly showed up during the pursuit. In the midst of battle, Colonel Powell got hurt, so John saved him. They both ran to a nearby mysterious cave where they found gold in the walls. However, their exploration was interrupted by the appearance of a thern, a strange being. The thern tried to harm John, but John defended himself using a gun. The last words the thern uttered were Barsoom as he clutched the medallion. John decided to take the medallion and said the word Barsoom. In an instant, he was transported to Mars, where the gravity was much lower. At first, he had trouble walking, but he soon discovered he could jump great distances and throw objects very far, suggesting he had super strength. While exploring, he came across alien creatures hatching from eggs. Suddenly, a group of aliens with four arms, riding strange creatures, opened fire at John Carter. In a remarkable display, John leaps onto a hill, which impresses the leader of the alien group. This leader, named Tars Tarkas, speaks in an unknown language, and John introduces himself as John Carter from Virginia. However, in a comical misunderstanding, Tars Tarkas mistakenly assumes that Virginia is John's name and asks him to leap again. Fearing for his safety, John instead jumps for his weapons, prompting the aliens to injure and subdue him. Meanwhile, in the city of Helium on Mars, Princess de Authoris rehearses for a secret weapon presentation. Her preparations are interrupted by her father, the king, who brings dire news. Helium is losing the war against Zadanga, suffering heavy casualties on all fronts because Zadanga's leader, Sab Than, wields the destructive Blu-ray. Princess Dea has made a surprising discovery, Sab Than's weapon is called the Ninth Ray, and she is working on building a similar weapon for Helium. However, a traitor on the council sabotages her efforts. With a heavy heart, the king informs his daughter that Sab Than will spare Helium if Princess Dea agrees to marry him. Despite her firm rejection of the offer, the king proceeds with wedding preparations in a desperate bid to save their city. On the other hand, John Carter is once again captured and placed with baby Tharks. Among the female Tharks, there's a fight over who gets to care for the infants. Carter seizes the moment to try and grab the medallion, but his attempt fails, angering Tarkas' right-hand man. While in the nursery with the babies, a Thark named Sola gives Carter a drink that magically helps him understand their language. During the night, Carter manages to escape from the nursery, but he's constantly pursued by an alien guard dog, which keeps revealing his location to the Tharks. Carter's attempt to protect the dog by attacking a man backfires, and he's overwhelmed by the Tharks. Later, Carter is taken to an arena where the Tharks plan to use him as a gladiator. Sola is also blamed and punished for Carter's escape. It's during this time that Carter realizes the medallion is with Tars Tarkas, the only way back to Earth. Suddenly, ships from Zadanga and Helium appear out of nowhere, engaging in a fierce battle overhead. Princess de Authoris, who escaped before her wedding, now fights her future husband. The Tharks don't favor one side over the other, they see the fighting as entertainment and even place bets on the outcome. During the intense battle, Princess Dea, clad in armor, rams her ship into a Zadongan vessel but ends up falling. In a swift move, Carter leaps to her rescue. More Zadongan soldiers descend into the arena, engaging Carter in combat and putting on a spectacle for the Tharks. Dea, impressed by Carter's fighting prowess, joins the fray, taking on some of the soldiers while Carter duels with others. As the battle rages on and Carter gains the upper hand, the Tharks intervene by opening fire on the Zadongan ship, 
causing damage and forcing it to retreat with the enemy soldiers eliminated. Carcass is deeply impressed by Carter's skills and proposes that he become his second in command. John reluctantly agrees, bargaining for Deos' safety. As Carter and Deos spend time together, they exchange knowledge about their respective cultures. Deos teaches him about Barsoom's terrain, various factions, and cities, while Carter comes to the realization that he is stranded on Mars. When he mentions that the medallion brought him here, she assumes he's a Thern. Against Sola's warnings, Deia leads Carter to a forbidden temple. Inside, they explore a statue of the goddess and decipher the markings, helping Deia understand that Carter isn't a Thern. The key to returning home, they realize, lies at the river of the goddess Isis. Their exploration leads to their capture for desecrating the temple, and they face the prospect of execution. Carcass publicly punishes Carter in front of other Tharks. Later, he privately reveals that Sola is his disobedient daughter, and he doesn't want her to face the same fate. Carcass gives Carter the medallion and his freedom, asking them to protect Sola as they venture away. Thanks to Tarkas, Dea, Sola, and Carter escape through the desert, enduring sandstorms and a long trek. Sola notices that Dea seems to be leading them toward helium rather than safety. Carter confronts her, and they argue. Dea reveals that Carter's abilities can help helium win the war and save her from Sabvan. Initially, Carter intends to leave Dea behind, but growing fond of her and her cause, he decides to take her with them on their journey to the river. Upon reaching a river, Sola initially wishes to venture alone to redeem herself, but Carter reminds her of her father's wishes, convincing her to stay with them. Together, they cross the river until they arrive at a mysterious structure. Carter and Dea leap onto the top to explore, triggering swirling blue energies on the ground. The medallion powers up as well, so Dea places it inside the temple, unlocking a display that reveals the energy here is similar to the ninth ray she has studied. They also make a startling discovery, Carter's real body is still on Earth, and the one on Barsoom is just a copy. To decode the glyphs further, Dea needs to use her science lab in Helium. Carter initially suspects she might be tricking him again to return to Helium, but she assures him that she genuinely wants to help him in her home. Carter decides to trust her. However, before they can leave, a war hoon army, guided by the Therns, attacks them. The trio hastily paddles across the river and flees into the desert. The enemy army is closing in, and as Carter faces this dire situation, he has flashbacks of his deceased family. In a moment of determination, he decides to fight the army and distract them, allowing Sola and Dea to escape. With Wula aiding him, Carter valiantly leaps into battle. Carter, fueled by the grief of losing his loved ones, continues to defeat countless enemies, leaving a pile of corpses in his wake. However, he's on the brink of being overwhelmed when, out of nowhere, a helium ship opens fire, scattering the Warhoon forces. The King of Helium reunites with his daughter, and together they rescue Carter. In an unexpected twist, Sab then appears from the ship without any soldiers. He asks Dea to marry him and promises peace. Dea is uncertain but ultimately lowers her sword, signaling her acceptance. The scene shifts, and an injured Carter wakes up in the custody of Zadongan goons. Fortunately, a Helium general loyal to Dea appears and pretends that Carter attacked him, creating a diversion that allows Carter and the general to escape. They fight their way out of the Zadongan headquarters, and Carter makes an incredible jump, with the general leading him straight to Dea. To Carter's dismay, he finds Dea in a wedding gown, prepared to marry Sabvan. He desperately tries to convince her not to go through with it, but Dea believes there's no other way to save Helium unless Carter fights for them. Heartbroken, John refuses to fight and clutches the medallion with the incantation that could take him back to Earth. However, at the last moment, Sabvan arrives, prompting Carter to hide on the roof. Dea, believing Carter has returned to Earth, leaves with Sabvan for the ceremony. When the coast seems clear, Carter attempts to flee, but the leader of the Therns, Matai Shang, suddenly shifts and stuns him using Ninth Ray technology. Matai Shang introduces himself and reveals that he can control Carter's body, forcing him to do his bidding. The Therns, known to shapeshift and assume mythological status, are beings with knowledge of Earth. Matai Shang takes Carter to the wedding and explains that once the couple is officially married, anyone with Ninth Ray knowledge will be eliminated. Carter is perplexed about Matai Shang's intentions, so the Thern leader clarifies that the Therns are eternal beings who oversee and control planetary events on a grand scale. They decided to place Sab then as a leader because he is a straightforward and easily manipulable figure, unlike Dea. Matai Shang places Carter in a pot with the intent to terminate him, but Wula, the loyal dog, suddenly appears and attacks Matai Shang, damaging his wrist device and freeing Carter. Carter jumps onto a speeder and, with Sola's sharpshooting skills, defeats some Zadongan soldiers. Wula, Sola, and Carter crash land the speeder in Thark territory. Their plan is to enlist the aid of the Tharks to rescue Helium and Dea. To their surprise, Talhaju is the new leader of the Tharks. He imprisons Carter in the same cell as a battered Tarkas. Later, 
Talhaju throws them into the arena to fight massive creatures known as the White Apes. Carcass and Carter find themselves overwhelmed by the sheer power of the giant ape. Carter, in an effort to protect the wounded Tarkas, distracts the beast. However, Talhaju releases another white ape into the arena. Sola bravely dives into the pit and saves her father, but the enraged apes yank Carter around. Despite the odds, Carter manages to entangle one of the beasts with chains and knocks it out with a rock. The second ape goes after Sola, but she passes her sword to Carter at the last moment, allowing him to dispatch the ape in the nick of time. Amid thunderous dark cheers, a grimy and victorious Carter emerges from the arena. He issues a challenge to Talhaju and quickly defeats him in a duel, claiming leadership of the Tharks. Carter then instructs the Tharks to save Barsoom by launching an attack on Zadanga. Under the new leadership, the Tharks enthusiastically agree, and they charge towards Zadanga. However, they soon realize that the wedding is not taking place in Zadanga but in Helium, where Sylvanian troops are stationed and ready to strike. Carter takes a speeder and flies to Helium alone. At the wedding, the ceremony is nearly complete, with Sabthan and Dea about to drink the holy water. Suddenly, Carter bursts through a glass window, revealing that Sabthan has set a trap and is about to launch an attack. Just as danger looms, Matai Shang appears and initiates the assault on Helium. Sabthan takes Dea away, but she manages to stab him and is on the brink of falling to her death. Thankfully, Carter swoops in to save her in the nick of time. Dea and Carter grab swords, defending Helium against the invaders. Sab then attacks Carter with a ninth ray blade technology that allows him to fly, and John retaliates but gets injured in the process. The Tharks come to the rescue by crashing into the palace using a salvaged ship, turning the tide of the war and overpowering Zadanga. Tars Tarkas hands Carter a sword, enabling him to injure Sabvan. However, Matai Shang uses the power of the ninth ray to finish off Sabvan and nearly defeats Carter. Dea's interference saves Carter from certain defeat. Matai Shang then assumes the shape of Dea and holds the real princess hostage, intending to replace her and take control of Barsoom. In a bold move, Dea steals Matai Shang's medallion and tosses it away, forcing the Thern leader to flee. While the Tharks find a medallion, Matai Shang shape shifts into Carter and retrieves it before the real John can stop him. Matai Shang escapes, and it appears that the battle is won. The Tharks and Helium soldiers celebrate their victory. Carter removes one of his wedding bands, kneels, and asks Dea to marry him. She quickly accepts, and everyone gathers for another wedding ceremony, where Dea and John drink the holy water, sealing their union. With the medallion gone, John decides to stay on Barsoom. As the new Prince of Helium, John Carter spends his nights with Dea. One night, he leaves the balcony, promising to return after getting some fresh air. When Dea goes back inside, a guard approaches her, expressing gratitude for John's heroic actions. However, to her shock, the guard transforms into Matai Shang, who swiftly uses his medallion to send John back to Earth. Carter awakens in a cave, covered in dirt, with a long beard. The golden etched rocks and the skeleton of Colonel Powell next to him indicate a significant time lapse. Desperately, he repeats the incantation, but he's unable to return to Barsoom. Over time, Carter mines the gold in the cave and becomes immensely wealthy. He starts an expedition in search of other medallions because Matai Shang informed him that the Therns regularly visit Earth. After many years of searching, Carter finally finds another medallion. Meanwhile, Edgar Rice Burroughs reads in John's diary that he faked his own death and used the sealed tomb to travel to Mars while preserving his earthly body. This was necessary because the Therns are watching him on Earth, and any harm to his earthly body would result in his death on both planets. Edgar visits the tomb and uses a secret password from John's diary to unlock it. To his surprise, John's body is not inside, and a Thern appears, intending to eliminate both John and Edgar. However, the real John Carter intervenes from the outside, eliminating the Thern and taking his medallion. John Carter then reveals that he never found a genuine medallion, it was all a ruse to outsmart the Therns and steal theirs. The movie concludes with John bidding farewell to Edgar, entering the tomb, and using the incantation to return to Dea on Mars, where he continues his life with her. Thank you for watching.